Good morning. Welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Nikolai. I'm excited that we get to worship on this cold, rainy day. Doesn't that sound great? Uh, this is actually my favorite weather. I was saying in adult ed that 65 and raining is my favorite day. So I've had, I've had a couple of really great days recently. Jane can't believe it. <laughs> um, we have a wonderful worship service ahead of us. Um, let's see here. I don't think I have any announcements for the worship service. We'll get ahead to our worship announcements in a little bit. Um, but we're gonna we're continuing to tinker with our liturgy and how we do announcements and welcome and things like that. So today we're trying welcome and then centering ourselves with a short prelude um, as we get ready for worship. So I invite yourself to find a posture you find prayerful as we center ourselves for worship. I invite you to please stand as you are able. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth, by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we're welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's need through this living water. Where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Spirit reigns forever. Amen. Let's pray together. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to all the world spirit of your truth and peace through jesus christ our savior and lord who lives and reigns with you and the holy spirit one god now and forever amen let's sing together loving spirit number 397 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You may be seated. And we're so excited. This is the last day of Sunday school. Um, and so we have a wonderful presentation of sorts. Oh, yeah! Caffeine, you can hear. <laughs> good job, everybody. That was really good. <laughs> Thank you guys for doing that. That was awesome. The first reading is found in Acts chapter 17. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to, proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord is heaven and earth does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each of us, for in him we live and move and have our being, 
as even some of your own poets have said. For we are too his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought to not think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone or an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Holy wisdom, holy word. Today's psalm is Psalm 66, verses 8 through 20. We'll read responsively. Bless our God, you peoples. Let the sound of praise be heard. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us out into a place of refreshment. I will enter your house with burnt offerings and, and will pay you. you. Those that I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you burnt offerings as a family with the smoke of rams. I will give you oxen and goats. Come and listen, all you who believe, and I will tell you what God has done for me. I call God out of my mouth and praise the Lord with my tongue. If I had cherished evil in my heart, the Lord would have would not have heard me. But in truth, God has heard me and has attended to the sound of my prayer. Blessed be God who has not rejected my prayer nor withheld unfailing love from me. The second reading is found in 1 Peter chapter 3. Who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for not doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated, but in your hearts sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He who put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I'm coming to you. 
In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Happy Mother's Day. I mean, you don't have to say that to me. I'm not a mom. Um, but I hope that you're saying it to your moms and grandmas. And um, if my mom is watching, hi, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Um, I can't remember. We got her a heated mouse a few months ago, you know, like to, yeah, to like do on your computer and stuff. I should have held on to it until Mother's Day. I gave it to her like a month ago. So we got her flowers. It's fine. <laughs> Um, but that's going to be important that it's Mother's Day coming up in a little bit, um, so bear that in mind. Um, but first, I want to share with you, does anybody know the name Daniel Erlander? I'd be very surprised if you did. <laughs> uh, Dan Erlander is an ELCA pastor, um, and uh, very regularly, I don't know if it's every year, he'll go out to a place called Holden Village in Washington State, which is a very remote uh, like community living kind of thing for Lutherans. Um, and uh, he goes out there and he writes these books and they're super accessible Lutheran theology and there's like tons of cartoons in them, which are really fun. And there's just one book that I use to teach little kids about Holy Communion. It's called um, A Place for Me, my Holy Communion book. And it's called A Place for Me because on every page there's a little X and there's a little arrow pointing to the X and it says A Place for Me. Um, and so on every page, we get a little bit of us in God's story. But there's two pages that are like really interesting to me. Um, one of them is just a picture. It's like in different little sections. Like in this section, Jesus is feeding people. In this section, Jesus is laughing with people. In this section, Jesus has his hands on someone. And by each picture, it says something about what Jesus did in his ministry. So like over here, it says Jesus fed hungry people. Over here, it says Jesus became friends with people who didn't have friends. And over here, it says Jesus healed people. Um, Jesus forgives people. Jesus tells people about God's love. Um, it has all of these different vignettes. About two thirds of the way through this book, A Place for You, my Holy Communion book, gets to a very sad page. A sad page where Jesus is having dinner with his friends and people come and arrest Jesus. They beat Jesus, they put him on a cross, and he dies. All throughout the book, in the small corner on the right-hand page, there's three people um, known as the crabby people um, who always look at what Jesus is doing and have something to complain about. Like, like Jesus is loving, you know, these people and they say they don't deserve love or they can't afford food, you know, things like that. Um, these crabby people throughout the book on this very sad page are very happy. And what happens is, you know the story, right? Jesus goes into the tomb, comes out three days later, comes back to life, and then he instructs his disciples before he ascends into heaven. And then after he ascends into heaven, after Jesus leaves the earth, the crabby people are crabby again because they see Jesus' disciples doing things like feeding people and healing people and becoming friends with people who don't have friends and forgiving people and uh, telling people about God's love. Jesus' disciples, his 12 plus the many others, they started to do what Jesus used to do. And the crabby people in the corner are saying things like, I thought we put an end to this. <laughs> thought we put an end to this when we put Jesus on the cross. Well, I don't want to spoil the ending for you, but is anyone here planning on reading Dan Erlander's book? Okay, if you don't put your hand up, I'm going to spoil the ending for you. Okay, at the end, after God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit have redeemed all of creation, there's this beautiful page with all sorts of different animals and people on it, and they're all praising God, and guess who's there? The crabby people are there. <laughs> yeah, the crabby people are there. 
Now, the reason why I tell you about this book is because, once again, in the Gospel of John, we heard last week and we're hearing again today, these are some of the last words that Jesus is speaking to his disciples before he's betrayed. So this is like Last Supper time. These are like last sentences before he's arrested and beaten and put on the cross. This is a passing of the baton to his disciples. In a little while, the world will not see me, but you will see me. And we talked last week, you know, it said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let your plural heart singular be troubled. Speaking to his disciples, each one in their own person, in their own anxiety, in their own fears, in their own trepidations, worried about what's coming next. Why is Jesus talking this way like he's never going to see us again? Each one of them, but bound together in a single heart. So that after Jesus dies on the cross, while he's gone for those three days, and then he's going to come back, but then he's going to ascend again. When Jesus isn't physically bodily around, Jesus is, in fact, actually physically and bodily around because Jesus abides with us. If you abide in my Father, my Father will abide in you, and I in you, you'll abide in me. It's very circular. But where we go, God is with us. And then this is the Mother's Day thing that I thought was really cool that came up today. It says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Now, how many of you are, like, in the psalm, planning on getting your mom some oxen and goats? No? What about flowers? Anybody getting flowers? I suppose I shouldn't ruin any surprises. But I would imagine moms and grandmas, aunts and sisters, right, that of all the things that you would want your child or your loved one to keep your commandments, to show that you have instilled in them some of the values and the love that you so cherish in yourself. And that is the longing that Jesus has for his disciples. Once I'm gone, will my disciples even remember how to behave? Will my disciples even remember what it's like to embody a loving human being, even in the face of fear and trepidation and anxiety and even violence? It hasn't been smooth sailing for the disciples, but this is like the first moment where they're going to come face to face with deadly violence because of the way they've chosen to live their life. And Jesus is curious and maybe anxious himself. Will the disciples carry on in this way of loving or will they defer back into their usual way of living? We're called to live in a hard way. It says that the world will not see me. This is Jesus talking. The world will not see me, but you will see me. The world does not accept the way that we're called to love in the face of fear and violence. It's not an easy kind of life. In fact, in our psalm for today, let's see here. I'm going to scroll up here. It says, our God has kept us among the living, has not allowed our feet to slip. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. Now, I learned this on a TV show called Pawn Stars. <laughs> Has anyone seen Pawn Stars? It's like a pawn shop show, right? Um, there was a, a, an episode where they talked about how do you try silver? You drill a hole in it, and then you test the shavings. I don't know if that's actually true for us anymore. I don't know. Um, but it, it put this psalm for me in a completely new perspective. When we say that we've been tried by God just as silver is tried, it means that God has bored into our very essence and tested the shavings. Our life is hard, and you'll find that all of the prophets in the Bible have come to points where they were ready to give up. Jeremiah says to God, you know, I do what you tell me to do. I say the things that you want me to say, but still people throw things at me. They call me names. I fear for my life. And then Jeremiah says, but when I try and hold it in, when I try to hold you and your presence back from the people around me, it feels like there's a fire shut up in my bones. It's more painful to hold God in than to bear responsibility for being God for others. Jesus says, because I live, you will live also. Jesus is sending an advocate, a Holy Spirit, to give us the strength, the courage, 
and the community that we need when we run into those crabby people who don't like to see the way that we're loving the world around us. An advocate is here to bind us together, us plural, into one singular heart. Someone once said that faith is more than a memory. Faith is more than just going through the motions on Sunday morning. Faith is more than liturgy or hymns. <coughs> faith is more than a story. It's happening right now. Faith is an embodied thing. Faith isn't just an exercise we do in our brain. It's not just a feeling we hold in our heart. It's also how we show up bodily for the world and for the people around us. This is going to sound like a joke, but it's not. <laughs> Did you know that air guitar competitions are a real thing? <laughs> it's, it's true. Um, so I remember when I was serving in Illinois, I went to Boston um, for what's called a Theopoetics Conference. So theology, um, poetry, so it's like art meets theology. Um, and there was a guy there who talked about air guitar competitions. He didn't give us a sampling or anything. If anyone wants to stick around after, I'd love to see your air guitar. Um, but they're talking about air guitar competitions, and the, the way you win an air guitar competition is you have to let the music inside of you, you have to let it live inside of you, and you have to let it come out in a very physical way. It's like lip syncing with your body, right? And so you have to physically embody and pretend that you are the music. And he told us this story because it's analogous to the way that we're called to live our faith. We're called to put body to the words and the stories that mean so much to us, that mean so much to our cerebral faculty and so much to our hearts that we so freely give to our friends and neighbors. We are called to embody physically this faith. And as the disciples had followed Jesus and had watched their teacher and watched how he showed up physically for his neighbors, even those he didn't know well, as they watched him show up, they were watching not just a teacher speaking, but a teacher doing. And we are called, whether you're ready or not, <laughs> to be the same for the world. Ready or not, Jesus is being arrested, flogged, hung on the cross, Ready or not, Jesus is about to ascend into heaven and send an advocate in his place. Ready or not, faith is more than a memory. I wanted to read for you a quote from Craig Keister. Uh, he's a professor at Luther Seminary. I actually don't know him. Many professors in the area might. Uh, but he says this, Coming to faith is analogous to falling in love. One cannot fall in love in the abstract. Love comes through an encounter with another person, and the same is true of faith. If faith is a relationship with the living Christ and the living God who sent him, then faith can only come through an encounter with them. And the Spirit is the one who makes this presence known. Faith can only be encountered through the living Christ and the living God. Faith is a gift. Sometimes we talk about faith as something that we earn or we build or we construct from scratch, but faith is a gift. It's a gift from the Holy Spirit, from the Advocate. It's a gift from our forebears and our ancestors. It's a gift from our mothers and grandmothers and aunts in our lives. It's a gift from the people who love us. It's a gift from God. Have you ever gotten a gift that you were so proud of that you decided to keep it in pristine condition and never play with it? <laughs> you ever gotten some shoes? I know this is like kind of a thing, right? Shoes are so cool, you don't want to put them on, you don't want to bring them outside and get them wet and dirty, right? Faith is not one of those things that we keep in a box and we, we get a, a, uh, you know, a pamphlet or a certificate of authenticity and bring it to the pawn shop, right, and get loads of money for it, right? Faith is something that we use. Faith is something that we break in. Faith is something that we embody and wear upon ourselves. Faith is something that gives our bodies fuel. But faith only makes sense if we have ourselves encountered God. 
If we think back on our lives and if we have found a place or a time or an event in which we have experienced the grace and love of God in a real and visceral way, that is the kind of visceral, embodied God presence that we're called to be for someone else. And we can't be that for someone else if we have not confronted, given thanks for, and appreciated the ways that God has shown up for ourselves. And so this is a journey. God showed up in a very real way for those disciples, and they were ready, even though they didn't believe it, to receive that baton. Everyone in this room might be ready to receive that baton. They might be ready to confront or maybe have confronted and given thanks for the way God has shown up in your life. Maybe there are some of us here who have not felt that grace and mercy yet. And if that's the case, church, it's our job to show the world that that grace and love exists. If you have felt grace and mercy and love in your life, think about what your life would be without that. That's what's at stake for us, the followers of Christ. Because if we don't embody that for others, no one else will. We are the people in whom God, the Christ, the creator, and the advocate live. We are the bodies that are called to be that grace and love for others. So even though it's hard work, we do get to come back to this place every week to see a smiling face, to be lifted up when we're broken down. We get to come back here and sit amongst friends and family and share in one heart, even though we carry a variety and a diversity of anxieties and fears. So, let not your plural heart, singular, be troubled. God is with you. Amen. I invite you to please stand as you are able. And we're going to sing, O Spirit All Embracing. And the music's in your bulletin, um, because it's not in our hymnal. <laughs>
Let us together proclaim the faith that we share with others around the world. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. A brief silence. God, our faithful companion, you promise to never leave us and to send your spirit to guide us in wisdom and truth. Send your people into the world to serve as mirrors that reflect and magnify your love. Hear us, O God. All the earth sings praises to you. Grant your care to the creatures, plants, and places that are suffering, and equip us to respond to their song. Make us agents of restoration and refreshment for all your beloved creation. Hear us, O oh God. You call all people of the world your children. Judge the nations justly. Show mercy to all who are oppressed and speak truth to power through your prophets. Hear us, O oh God. Nurturing Lord, you send your spirit to grant us peace. Make your presence known to those who feel abandoned or alone and to all who are sick or grieving, especially Preston L., Kathy L., Guadalupe, Guadalupe, Chris, Nick, family and friends of Carolyn Roseman, Harlan Lobbs, and Roger Steer at their death, and those we name now. Hear us, O God. You hold us in your loving care. We pray for mothers and mother figures. Console all who long to be mothers, children estranged from their mothers, anyone grieving the death of a mother, and mothers who have lost a child. Support all for whom this day is difficult. Hear us, O God. Almighty God, you give life and breath to all things. We give thanks for the Apostle Matthias and all your saints, especially Caroline, Harlan, and Roger. Sustain us by your love until we join the saints in glory. Hear us, O God. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Let's take a moment to share that peace with those around us. Peace, Joanne. Yeah, you figured out, you can be seated. 
As we continue to play around uh, with our order of service, we are going to do some announcements uh, right now. Um, I know it's Mother's Day, but uh, did you know that Mother's Day is also KFC's biggest sales day of the year? <laughs> it's true. And so if you don't feel like cooking tonight or don't know how to cook, um, <laughs> looking at you guys, um, you could always come to Henderson Roadhouse at 6 and have dinner with us. Um, I got a reservation for 20 people. I'm one of them. Um, and so this is our monthly hangout. Normally we do them on Mondays, but uh, they're not open tomorrow. So uh, tonight at 6 o'clock, Henderson Roadhouse. It'll be my first time there. Um, Pastor Scott Richards told me that it's great. So um, come have fun with us. Um, Oliver um, isn't here. This is not Oliver. This is Joanne. Um, thank you, Joanne, for filling in. My dad's name was Oliver. Your dad's name was Oliver. Oh, wow. He looks younger than I thought he'd be. Oh. <laughs> wow. Talent runs in the family. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Oliver Hall, not her dad, um, has a piano recital a week from today, um, and that's at 6.30, and it's at Gustavus Adolphus Church, not the college, so it's in Minneapolis, um, and so please, he makes the drive for us almost every week. I think we can make the drive for him um, once a year, so yeah, what do you think, Melvin? Oh, okay. Now I know why Rose left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so maybe when we sing happy birthday, we can say Cindy and moms. It's Cindy's birthday. It was last Wednesday, right, Cindy? Yeah, so we do have to sing happy birthday to Cindy. Um, when we sing happy birthday to the moms, I guess, um, think like maybe like your birth. I don't know, <laughs> right? And then they took over. Um, but are there any other like birthday birthdays we can sing for? You don't think so? Well, let's give it one more second, just in case. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, well, Cindy, I hope this isn't weird for you. Moms and grandmas and aunts, I hope this isn't weird for you. We're going to do Cindy and moms, even though it's not a lot of mom's birthdays today. <laughs> okay. All right. Can, we, can you give us a little something for starting happy birthday? There it is. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you and Mother's Day. Happy birthday, dear Cindy and moms and aunts and sisters. Happy birthday to you. All right, that was a little bit of a mess, but we got it done. Happy Mother's Day, happy birthday. <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, my last announcement, and then I'll open it up, is next Sunday, not only is Oliver having a senior recital up in the cities, but um, it's also Confirmation Sunday. So we have four confirmands, and they're all great. Um, and they, uh, they're all getting confirmed. So we have Etta Fahey. I'm not going to get these in alphabetical order. That's my bad. Um, Colin Krenz, Kaya Maltz, and uh, 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 Kaya. No, I said Kaya. Colin Alex Muhlenhardt. Okay, I got them all. Okay, that's what it is. He's like shooting daggers at me too. <laughs> He's like right there. Don't forgive me. Um, cool, and they're, they're so great. Uh, I'm so proud of these students. Um, so please come next Sunday at the normal time, 9.30. It's going to be a wonderful service. We'll affirm our baptisms together. Um, we're going to sing a brand new communion song um, that our confirmation students wrote themselves. <laughs> Maybe Alex wants to lead it. No. <laughs> I'm going to have them all lead it, actually. Um, it's going to be really good. And they're doing a children's time, too. It's going to be awesome. Are there any other announcements out there that we need to know about? Oh, yeah. Betsy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, please make note of the September enrollment. We are having a very, very
Thanks, Betsy. Uh, any other announcements? All right, in that case, we're gonna move on with our offering. Um, so noisy offering is happening. <laughs> Um, and that continues to go to Camp Onomia. Yeah, let's not do, let's just do three. <laughs> I invite you to please stand as you are able and let's pray together. Generous God, we give thanks for these gifts of the earth which you have first given us. Reveal to us the risen one and send us out in service to the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. Let's sing three verses of number 419 for all the faithful women.
Go in peace, serve the risen one. Thanks be to God.